jump in and get started so you guys can get on the move. Um, in 2016, Bob Bolin said you were stand out and best of performance during the South by Southwest Festival, um, as well as the artist he expected to hear the most from going forward. <laughs> While to hear that is well-deserved, um, flattering and outstanding, with it, I'm sure, come significant expectations and pressure. Uh, how does that feed into your creative process, project prioritizing, your decision-making? That's a good question. I think um, there's definitely external pressure a lot of the time to to be creating and to be creating good stuff, but I think the most pressure comes from ourselves um, and the fact that whatever song or album or project we're working on, we want it to be the best that it can be. So I think words like that from Bob Boylan are like really encouraging and and I feel that they're less of an expectation and a pressure than than the expectation and pressure we put on ourselves. Totally. And yeah. that's already in there. Yeah. yeah. Well that's fair. I like that. Um I and mean, 2017 was a monster year for you guys with a lot of professional achievements and accolades. Um, I wanted to ask you about some of that, you know, going forward. Um, your appearance on the super popular Tiny Desk series on NPR, what was that like? It was really fun. It was when we, um, we actually, Bob offered to do one with us at that South By performance that he saw. Um, and we were like, oh, God, like, <laughs> we're not ready. Will this really happen? Like, are we ready? Blah, blah, blah. Um, and we ended up taking some time before we did it to work on our album and, and stuff. But it was a very surreal experience. We both have, like, grown up watching tons of Tiny Desk concerts. So it was very surreal. And it's crazy how quick it happens. Like, you play your songs once, and then it's done. Like and the whole play process only is three songs, twenty minutes. Yeah. So it was like in and out. It's really crazy. Um, that's awesome. Then, that, do they have like a bunch of decorations and stuff for you to look out of other desks, like it's, performances and stuff, or is it just kind of simplistic? You, what I thought always watching these videos was that it was this tiny room mm -hmm. with Bob Boylan's desk in it. And it turns out that it's actually this, like, giant, like, space <laughs> with a hundred desks. And then everybody gets up from their desk and comes and watches the performance. And so, it, so it's cool. like a cubicle. Yeah, it's like a cubicle in, like, in a sea of desks, um, which is kind of interesting. And, like, it's funny, like, you definitely recognize the bookshelves from the videos and you're, like, it's very weird to be there and... And to become like part of that community of definitely artists, it's and on top of it being super fast, you also are putting on a small concert <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> yeah, um, your album Young has been wildly successful. Which congratulations, it's it's Thank more you. than deserved. Um, the reviews for it repeatedly mention authenticity, believability, relativity, the uniqueness, and all the comments. Like those are kind of the, you know the overtone of, of everybody's feedback on it. Um, did you realize while you were recording it that it was going to be this relatable and successful? And for those who haven't heard it, what about it do you feel is the key to its universal acceptance and popularity? Authentic and believable is a, is, are really funny <laughs> terms because it's like, why would it be anything else? You know, like, mm. um, but I, I do think it's true that like, we, we think it's very important to like be ourselves in mm -hmm. our music and I'm glad that comes through mm -hmm. that um, I think we kind of did know that it could be really good and relatable and relatable and successful and that's why there was like so much self inflicted pressure when we were making it because we were like uh oh this could be really good like we need to see it through and make mm -hmm. sure it's really good yeah um so, like, I think we did kind of know that we were making something that felt, um, or we hoped anyway, that, like, it felt as fresh and exciting to us as to other people. But, um, yeah. I also think, like, we, the, and then when we would write a lyric that, like, really translated that feeling, I think we knew that, like, other people in our age group, in our demographic, like, 
a lot of people like might be able to latch on to that same feeling and so I think we had an inkling but we didn't know quite like how relatable it would be and it's always astounding to me when people come up to us and say like 23 is my life like yeah. you've written like exactly what I feel and we're just like what yeah <laughs> but it's very rewarding and and made the whole process totally worth it is there is there a few in particular that people tend to gravitate towards or is it a variety like think, depending on where you are and what your crowd looks like <clears throat> yeah I think I think it depends but w- I think too that we get a lot where like people really tell us that they've experienced those exact emotions are 23 and walk on also mm-hmm. the fog the I fog like yeah people say a lot I yeah. really love um leave the light on mm. uh, there's something about it just you know the reflection and and stuff that I really appreciate so, if I'm going to throw my own opinion. In yeah. <laughs> um, and then, I don't usually ask about this, but my photographer asked um, that I do so. What, you know, coming in on, on music and now that you've been in and, and kind of traveling around, um, who are the influences? You know, you're, you're linked up with tennis for the tour. So, I'm sure there's, you know, mutual respect, friendship and stuff there. You can always draw inspiration and you know excitement around people that you're touring with but outside of that who were your all's kind of favorites and and you know maybe mentors or or people that you are about yeah definitely tennis is a group that like in addition to being able to tour with them like they are they are always offering us like answers and acting as mentors which we've always been searching for um and so we've really come to appreciate all that they do and and the kindness that they share with us um but yeah I think when we're I uh, that was kind of the trouble I think with our first few tours is that we had nothing to go on like Mm -hmm. we had nowhere nobody to ask no like neither of us have touring musicians in our families like there was no one to kind of explain like here's where it gets hard like here's what you can do um and so I'm not can you think of of influences or mentors that we have your music is just so versatile it has that um you know that that folk sound and that those you know sort of bluegrass like vibes to it but then it's also you know, you have these groups like Purity Ring and Tegan and Sarah, old Tegan and Sarah, um, you know, kind of just all these different sounds come out in it, but you never know like what you guys were drawing from or, you know, Mm -hmm. is it just because the way that you were harmonizing together sort of made this music, you know, your style? Um, I think like before (laughs) we started writing, we were, we loved like a lot of folk music. So like Simon and Garfunkel and like you know, Joni Mitchell, people like that. And then we also loved a lot of electronic music like Chet Faker and Jamie XX. So I think artists like that kind of influenced like our original style of kind of wanting to be, you know, folktronica, being in the folk and the electronic genres. But I think these days, like the the bands that we tour with definitely, or like the bands that we're surrounded with definitely influence us. Like we signed to Arts and Crafts. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were listening to Feist before, certainly, but like since then, we're just like diehard Feist people. <clears throat> Matt Corby, we toured with, and I think he was very influential to us. Mm-hmm. Tennis, tennis. Um, yeah, I think I think like pretty much every band that we come into contact with influences us, us in some way. That's that's a cool thing to have. Um, I guess that we'll see on the upcoming album, albums how that kind of feeds yeah. into your yeah. to your process Definitely. um so the entertainment industry has saturated the media recently with stories of female inequality and professional prejudice um do you feel as female artists that the same struggle exists in the music industry and if so what do you do you know personally to kind of protect yourself and combat the oppression from it <laughs> it's a very poignant question right now um <laughs> We're, it's not to put you on the spot. No, I just that's I kind of really right. want. We'd love to answer we love it. To talk about this. <laughs> um, I think everything you're describing is very prevalent in the music industry. Um, 
in the same way that it's we're seeing it come to light in the entertainment world um i think we're we're constantly trying to figure out how to combat it and how as individuals and as a group and like to to kind of fight back against sort of the inherent sexism of the music world um and actually as of late we've decided that we're in a new era um <laughs> where and i think it took this long to kind of pinpoint the ways in which we get kind of like shoved aside or mistreated or disrespected because it's not always like overt you know mm -hmm. um it's very subtle like <clears throat> like being at a venue and the sound person goes straight towards like our drummer who's male to ask to to be like this is your band right rather than us who are like the band um, who doesn't or like um trying to think of like just like men a lot of male new fans coming up to us mm -hmm, yeah. saying oh like i don't usually like girls playing like sad music but you guys were actually okay and normally and and in the past our instinct what we've been socialized to do is like smile and say mm -hmm. oh my gosh thank you so much or like, like who pro your production is amazing who produces for you like assuming that we don't do it ourselves yeah or like who wrote that drum part like because like you guys obviously didn't like stuff like that yeah um and so i think it it's taken almost two years to realize the the ways in which those like subtle sexist remarks a happen and b have like influenced our mental health and our ability to like stay strong and healthy because like you when you walk into a venue as a woman performing you it's have to space. wear yeah you have to wear like a coat of armor it's not like traditionally your space according to most of the venues that we've been to and For the most part all men working there mm -hmm. yeah and simultaneously as you enter this like very male dominated and and kind of like gruff space you're asked to share and be the most vulnerable right by performing your own work and so it's like just exhausting exhausting and i think now only after two years of this are we like sort of figuring out how to how to manage it and so this is like the new era you know and <laughs> so um when we get sexist questions in radio interviews or we get these backhanded compliments from men who approach us after shows like we're, we're no longer <clears throat> responding politely <laughs> yeah um we're but. trying to we're trying to respond like appropriately and in in a fair and just manner but also point out the ways in which their own prejudice is is seeping into what they're saying and doing well and for the record you're still selling a ton of albums you're selling out shows you know like tonight so it is a new era like you said you know i saw um on your instagram you wore uh women rock sweatshirts in chicago um and it really is that i mean this this you know the feelings that you get from this treatment aren't affecting your success so finally you know just like in you know correlation with the the entertainment industry it's not affecting adversely to to what you're doing you're able to sort of you know overcome mm. it and surmount it and i think in some pushing. ways that's true but i think there are a lot of ways in which it does affect it for example like certain news outlets don't really like to cover like vulnerable music sung by women a lot of festivals don't book a lot of female acts like i think it's true that like um it's getting better and like easier for for females to be more visible and respected for their work but i certainly don't think the fight is over and i think it definitely does adversely affect women in the music industry i'm really glad i asked this i think that's mm -hmm. important to hear um just so people are aware hopefully it will get better mm -hmm. um i'll ask you one more before i let you go um, again, you know, with shows selling out, you're on tour throughout, you know, 2018. Um, the album's successful, selling in stores and online and things. 
Um, it doesn't seem likely that there could be more, but if there is, what else exciting is going on in 2018 for you? <clears throat> We're, this is um, a new, well, it's an old passion of ours, but something that we're trying to do way more this year is collaborate with um, female emerging designers. Um, and so we're doing right now a lot of work um, with a stylist and, and getting together um, a list of who we think are incredible designers that are just like emerging brands and trying to do um, cross promotional work with them, and um, a lot of female designers as well. All female, to kind of, yeah, to yeah. kind of cross promote because we is love an excellent, fashion. So. Yeah. <laughs> I know it doesn't look like it, <laughs> but we're wearing this stuff because we have to go into a. Venue, and you've been so traveling. Yeah. I I do not judge what you're wearing when you show up places. <laughs> My dad would be very proud of your sweatshirt. I have to tell him. Um, no, and, and I think that is an awesome, you know, thing to have on, you know, your mind and, and sort of using, you know, what you're doing. Is that, was that part of um, your recent video production? You, you know, made mention to all the outfits and all the beautiful clothes. Did you use designers for that? Was it, yeah. was it part of the... Yes, it was a lot of um, kind of independent New York-based female designers. We have an amazing New York-based female stylist. The video was worked on by directed, um, co direct, directed, co-directed by, by a really talented woman. So, um, so we're trying to, in the same way, we're trying to fight for space for ourselves. We're trying to make it for other women as well. <sighs> that is excellent. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.